everybody, I am Jenny Vanna, City of Des Plaines Media Services Director. Today on Des Plaines Connection, we're going to get an inside look into our fire services, talk to our fire chief about some changes to operations, and check out the city's new multi-purpose vehicle, which I'm sitting in right now. Let's get started. Well, I'm here now at Fire Station 63 on Thacker Street on the west side of Des Plaines, and joining me is Fire Chief Dan Anderson. Thank you so much for inviting us to the firehouse today. Thank you for coming. Well, this is our first time doing an interview for DPTV. I'm newer, you're new-ish. Uh, so tell everybody how long have you been with the city and a little bit about your background. Okay. I've been uh, with the city for about 18 months, started in January of last year, and then COVID came in and um, took a uh, took a lot of the wind out of everything we were doing. Um, but I've been here for uh, so about 18 months. Uh, I came from a, uh, I've got a very lengthy fire service background. Uh, my previous position was the fire chief in Roselle. And prior to that, I um, was a deputy chief down in the Lyle Woodridge Fire District. But I've been in the fire service now for just uh, started my 38th, 38th year. Wow, well, thank you for your service. Why did you want to come to Des Plaines? Well, I was at another turning point in, uh, uh, my career, I had finished uh, my objectives where I was at and uh, an opportunity like this opened up. It's a beautiful community, it's a changing community and uh, with what the uh, city was looking for, I felt that I'd be a, a good fit and here I am. We're sure glad you did. So give us an overview of fire service and fire operations in Des Plaines. Okay. Um, the fire department is comprised of about 96 total employees, uh, 87 of which are on, on shift. They're the ones that work the 24 on, 48 off. So there's 29 per shift. We have three shifts. Um, and they are spread out amongst three fire stations. Obviously, this one here on Thacker, headquarters up at, uh, on River Road, and uh, Station 62 down uh, on Oakton here. Um, we operate currently, we're operating four fire apparatus, four fire companies, and four ambulances. Um, so we have out of this house a squad, an engine, and a second ambulance. Station 61 up on the, the headquarters has a engine, fire engine, a tower ladder, an ambulance, and our battalion chief, who's the 24-hour chief on, on duty. And then Station 62 down on the south side has an engine and an ambulance. Um, and uh, we run about 9,000 calls a year, and, uh, um, but uh, every day we have four, four fire apparatus and four ambulances on staffed every day, and a battalion chief. And this is one of our, our new vehicles, and we're going to get a tour of it a little bit later in yes. the program, is that right? That's correct, yes. So part of my task is coming in was to take a look at the department as a whole. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? Are we doing things that we, are we not doing things that we could be doing? Can we do things better? There was nothing that was off the table. And so as part of my assessment, my, the first six months of what I did is I really truly looked at our, at our operations and what we were doing. And uh, we made some changes. We, we put out some, some things in July of last year um, that we were going to shift course and and go to a new model of delivery of service. And uh, one of the things that I identified was that we needed a fourth ambulance um, in town rather than just three. So uh, we announced a plan to, to change to the model we're currently operating on the four fire companies, four ambulances from a five fire company, three ambulance piece. So uh, one of the first things I did within the first two weeks of being here was uh, change how we did our staffing. When we had ex uh, not necessarily extra people, but when we didn't have a lot of people on leave, those extra people got put on each of the fire apparatus. And, but yet we needed that fourth ambulance. So I took those extra people and repurposed them and staffed a fourth ambulance when the staffing allowed. Um, but we've done a whole host of, of other things that, uh, um, that uh, we were able to accomplish. We negotiated a new contract with the IAFF. That's something that hadn't been done before it expired in over 20 years. And um, uh, re, uh, reinvented kind of our training. We filled a bunch of vacant positions and uh, uh, we're setting up for our next phase of, of implementation of some of the things that we've been working on for the last 18 months or so. 
And I know you, because and we've talked about this, you've really taken a data-driven approach to this. So adding in that fourth ambulance and, and to explain that for us so we understand that better. Correct. So I mentioned that we run about 9,000 calls. We're, we're on pace for a little more than that this year. But about 80, 75 to 80% of what we do is medical. And um, so really three out of four calls every day is, in, is, in, is medically related. So um, when we looked at, at those things, that made, it made sense. Our fire call volume only accounted for 25%, but yet we had more people dedicated to, to, uh, to the fire side on those companies. We were also uh, extremely utilizing our neighbors, calling them our ambulances and from, the, from our neighboring towns to pick up that slack. So um, it made sense that we could repurpose, reutilize our personnel, um, and, uh, and, and drop that fourth, drop one fire company and drop in a fourth ambulance. And that's where, that's where we're headed. And, it's, and today, I mean, we are and in uh, November, actually, we started that new model. So we've been this, on this, uh, what I call the 4-4 model. That's been in place since the 18th of November. And we've been successful in, in, in operating those four, the first phase of those, these changes. So that was phase one. What about the other phases? So the other phases are obviously this is our, our newest piece of apparatus and it's going to be uh, accompanied by a new uh, called mini rescue. It's a, uh, a shorter, it's almost the size of an ambulance, but it's, it's a um, can't transport patients. It's going to have a rescue body on the back of it and it's going to be a complement piece of this apparatus and it's also going to be a primary chase vehicle for um, doing EMS incidents and picking up a lot of the service calls that we do, uh, lift assists, um, trouble alarms, and those kind of things. So uh, it is going to be staffed as part of that fourth ambulance. That, that fourth ambulance crew is going to uh, be a, it's called the jump company. It, uh, will, it will jump between the two pieces of apparatus, but it's primary, primarily going to be used first as a first in or first response with our ambulances. and. Uh, what that will do is it enables our fire apparatus to stay in their service areas more often than not. And, and uh, by working with this model and then some of the changes we made in how we respond to things, our goal is to keep our fire companies in their service areas more often than they have been previously, which is a, a significant benefit to the community. And, and from a, uh, if you look at it from an economical standpoint, it costs a lot less to operate one of those little vehicles than taking something out that's this monstrous of a vehicle to do something another type of vehicle could do without impacting service to the community. Right. You talked about um, one of the benefits being where the you know personnel can be in their service areas, right? And so um, explain that a little bit more and what are some of the other benefits so folks at home really you know, understand what it means to them. Well, with, uh, with, the, with the fire companies, obviously they are, you know, we have a, um, they're, they're cross-trained as paramedics. Um, every fire company has is advanced life support um, EMS equipment on it. So we can handle pretty much most EMS incidents with the company that's on the street before an ambulance gets there um, if the ambulances are busy. And in our case, since three quarters of what we do is EMS, they're fairly busy. Um, but then it also provides us with that ability to have a multi-purpose, in this case, a multi-purpose vehicle in our service area that can continue to, to provide not only the EMS, but the fire service for those uh, times when fire calls come in. Um, so that'll be the beauty of this vehicle. And we'll talk about how this vehicle has this multi-purpose function that the others don't um, coming up. All right, well, let's go check it out. Okay. All right. Well, we're outside the station now in front of our new piece of equipment. Uh, Chief, tell us uh, more about this. Is it in service now? It's not in service. We actually just took delivery of it um, about two weeks ago. And uh, um, we, since this is a new type of piece of new piece of apparatus and, and it has a new pump on it that we that no one's ever trained with. It's a whole new concept. So it's going to take some time to put it in service. and. Uh, uh, once we get everybody trained, it's going to probably be another month, so probably the middle of October. We're shooting for the 15th of October to put it in service. Um, but it's, uh, um, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a new concept for the city, and this is a multi-purpose vehicle. And um, it's a little bit different than the fire engine that we're standing next to in that this one is going to have multi, 
uh, it's going to have a multitude of things that, that aren't, aren't being able to handle on the other side. Um, and part of that is this is going to have our technical rescue, our hazardous materials, and our um, dive rescue equipment already on it so that we can start taking care of an incident without having to um, supplement, supplement, with, supplement other with other things or wait for what's currently on some trailers to get there. So we'll be able to take care of a lot of business just in the specialty team things plus with our, all our other duties as uh, we, we transition from a single role unit to a multi-purpose unit. Let's take a look at this toy, right? Okay. <laughs> well, um, with us today is Lieutenant Minas, Minas Klikas. Um, he was one of uh, a half a dozen or so members of the department that um, we engaged into doing this. This wasn't just the administration saying, here's what we're going to get. We enlisted the help of some of our personnel, and he's been an integral part of, of developing this and getting it here today. So, um, Thanks Lieutenant. for being here, Lieutenant. My pleasure. All Thank right, you. All right. Let's check it out. Okay. Uh, we'll start with the driver's seat here, and we'll just do a, a walk around. So starting right here. Um, you know, all apparatuses have to have an, uh, an engineer and a driver, but just as, as, a, as a point to start. Um, it's a newer vehicle, uh, it has more updated uh, safeties in it. Uh, one of the things that's impressive is all these newer vehicles have the airbags that are integrated along with uh, automatic safeties for doors, equipment. It does have right here, which is pretty interesting, cameras. So every time you turn the turn signal on, the driver has a 360 degree view of the vehicle. So if he's making a left turn, it shows the left side, right side in reverse. So that's something that's pretty neat, and it's all right here at the driver, which does help. Um, this would be the backwards firefighters area. Uh, as Chief said, uh, firefighters slash cross train uh, paramedics. This is kind of their work area. The, the whole vehicle is a work area. But um, besides your day-to-day -day firefighting and EMS uh, calls that we may go on, we'll have storage for all our, uh, and that's where we're saying the Chief is saying integrating specialty vehicles. So, meters, hazmat, uh, things that we normally wear at different parts are all coming to one spot in a temperature controlled area along with our EMS on the other side. We'll also be able to have a, a diver set with his SCBA as well as your firefighter SCBAs. And as we move around, it's, it's a lot of vehicles, but um, like simple things, minor things here. This is stuff that's still being filled out, but this is like what we call like a rapid deployment, like a pre-connect hose, which will be coming, our Stokes basket for rescues. And then you'll see things like Give you a little more better detail. Right, so the this is called a puck pump, which means a puck uh, pump under cap type apparatus. And what that means is it's a condensed area for water supply, which is pretty much the most important thing you can do when you're first in suppression vehicle. Very important. But they gave us a smaller work area, which increased storage space, which now allows us to work with specialty teams that have, like we said, a multi-purpose vehicle. So it's doing a lot with a smaller space in a more advanced way. Mm -hmm. this, this vehicle also has the ability to um, pump and drive. So it's a, if, it, if we're, it would cover a lot of the area on the tollway. So if we have a little brush fire along the roadway, we can actually put the thing in pump and at a slow speed drive and put water. With our normal fire engines, we can't do that. Okay. So a lot of these are compartments we'll show you as we go along here. Just to give you an idea of these two right here, this is, this is what they call a, being that's what they call a full depth compartment. So what that means is the area is being filled. But if you look at these areas, these are one and a half times of what's on this vehicle. So as we incorporate a couple different specialties onto one apparatus, we're at we're able to make certain areas specific to certain calls, certain trades. So this would be like a uh, TRT slash confined space. So they'll have things for collapse or a hole, a guy that's trapped in a hole, as well as all the assortments or building collapse and struts and supports. And then next here might be more ropes, so it's more technical and people that are maybe stuck in a high angle place and need assistance of a rope team. So each compartment is going down the road of a specialized uh, trade or specialty. So just to give you an idea of like, um, you're probably wondering, we said, you know, does first in suppression mean be a fire engine work as well? So if you look, watch it. So just this right here would be like our normal attack area for hosts. So just this is a larger attack line. This is a supply line, a basic house fire attack line. And then we have a little extra space here. But we're still meeting by condensing a longer ladder that could hit a three-story building, but still do suppression as an engine work and then everything else. Am I right that I'm hearing excitement from you and talking oh, yeah. about this? Yes, I do. It's a, 
It's been uh, really a pleasure from the Chief and the Administration to incorporate us and let us uh, take our ideas and then actually guide us. I haven't done this before, so a lot of experience helping us, but at the same time, giving us the opportunity to partake in something new. So it's been very exciting. It's, it is exciting. So this is gives something a little more, a cabinet that's actually filled as we go. Just like what we call e-tools. So something you used to hear in the past, you'd say the jaws of life, you know, and what we used to have even on that apparatus is like, you have uh, a generator, you have to pull it, start it, it's gas run, you have to plug in the hoses. There's a, a fair amount of work to get going just to get the operation of maybe extricating someone out of a, a car accident or uh, some type of situation like machinery. So if we go like this, these are what they call e-tools. Uh, for our uh, help of the department and uh, the gentleman, the uh, tenant Iorio that does the small tools and department spec'd out these new e-tools. So just stuff like this that is more advanced that we've never had and all being put in. And we're not even, you know, we don't even have 50% of it in here yet. Okay. And this is one of those purchases. These are all, these are, we just took delivery of these and this is another one of those pieces of the puzzle that as we move through and, and increase our technology driven um, service, that this was a, um, between this, what's on this vehicle, and uh, the ladder truck that's up at Station 61, this was about a $90,000 purchase that the City Council saw the need and, uh, and they've supported us with, with this as we, as we continue to go. So. Very good. Um, a lot of this is more storage space. Just give an idea, I'm gonna open them to show you. Uh, a lot of measuring right now and fitting, which is at that month we're talking about with the chief. But just to give you an idea of, you know, the spacing, and then there's things where we have, you know, this is where you cut custom fabrication, so you may have tools on this side and maximizing the compartment. You can open it up and have it on two sides. So you're utilizing the maximum of a compartment and not just put uh -huh. One of the other maximizing space pieces is back when they first started designing fire apparatus, this was all just dead space. Uh -huh. So we had to have, we took up compartment space to put all our spare SCBA, our, our, our air pack bottles. So now we can carry um, enough for, for people to go through three bottles, which is a long time to be on, on air. But, uh, and then we can stack our uh, extinguishers and stuff in there. So it's, a, it's an awesome use of, mm -hmm. of space. Yes. An efficient use of space is correct. Every square inch is pretty much being used. Um, this is just more of the compartment space. This would be our EMS cabinet, too. So you get to see so that's, a good thing. that's a safety feature, yes. right? And one of the nice things is it's got to have power, but at least you get to see that film, which is good. These are uh, electronically controlled with a, its own securement because they carry narcotics. You can't just walk up and grab EMS bags. In today's environment, you want to make sure you have everything so here. So all of our EMS equipment is tucked in here. So typically the paramedic is going to be riding here. He'll be able to unlock the cabinet. And when we say it's expensive equipment, there's you know a $40,000 cardiac monitor and probably another $10,000 worth of equipment. Historically, it's just been unlocked. So now it's, uh, it's a unlocked to get in. As soon as we walk away from it, in 20 seconds, the door locks and it keeps some stuff of value in, in place. So we also have sockets on the rig, so it's constantly charging and monitoring. So if you have extended operations, like in some of these compartments here, we have sockets. So if we're running something with our e-tools and we run through the light for the time of battery, we can actually hook it up and then run on a constant source. So we're unlimited in our time. So last right. even longer, I guess. And last but not least, uh, one of the areas is just to see us at the apparatus we incorporate is um, Front suction, it's still a vehicle that does suppression, has to attain a positive water source uh, at a fire to supply water uh, as needed. So we have dip, three different areas we'll achieve that. They just call this front bumper or front suction hose. Uh, it's 100 feet right now, um, as well as some mirrors, some lights. Uh, one of the things called the Mars light on front, it's a traditional light that we added, just a little extra visibility for those times of emergencies. And uh, one last thing is, I forgot earlier, on all four sides of the vehicle is a winch that we can hook up. It's a 10,000 pound winch. It can be used for a variety of issues or securements or rescues. And there's four different placement points on the apparatus all the way around. And all right, thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you I for having really me. appreciate it. No problem.
Well, thanks, Chief, for giving us an inside look into our fire service and operations and our new piece of equipment. Anything you'd like to add? Well, again, uh, continuing our, our uh, theme on as we, we change and implement change, a couple of the other things that we're working on uh, with the support of the City Council and the Manager's Office that uh, um, in the upcoming budget that we're working on, um, it has to, has a, has, we've requested the funding to be able to replace the ladder truck that's up at Station 61. Um, we're also working on plans for Northside Fire Station. In addition to um, remodeling Station 61, make that a little more user friendly, it's an old, very old station, as well as tearing down and rebuilding Station 62 down on Oakton. So there's a lot of things that are going on. Um, it's a lot of change, a lot of, but it's, it's all in a positive, positive manner and without the support of the City Council and the Manager's Office, we couldn't, we couldn't be doing it. So. And the support of the men and women who are out oh, there every day. Absolutely. We want to thank them for everything. So, absolutely. Thanks so much. Um, we really appreciate it. We're going to come back and talk to you uh, when some of these other changes are made. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. That's all for today. We'll see you next time.